Okay, now, swing over to here, load a few more of these, swing over to here, load a few more of these. <laughs> oh, isn't that cute? Little baby Christmas tree. Welcome back, everybody, to Silver Run Forest on Farming Simulator 22. I'm an old guy gaming, and uh, we are about ready to replant uh, trees on our property here. Uh, the first thing I want to do, though, is I want to... Uh, we're going to actually purchase the paper mill. And I'm going to take my remaining 9-meter uh, logs here to the paper mill to get it started and then um, after that we're gonna come back here um, I'm gonna do a little bit more landscaping type of work in our landing area which is just off to the left here and basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove all the vegetation from the ground so the area that you know I'm still gonna plant trees there and when we re-harvest this area in you know three years from now or whatever however long it takes for the trees to grow we will um, use that same area as the landing. Sorry, my, my, my head's a little off this morning. Uh, so, but I want to remove all the vegetation because it's just, you know, I want to get that all out of the way because it's just a pain in the neck when you're trying to deal with logs, especially when you're on foot and you can't see where the log is because there's, you know, bushes and that sort of thing in the way. Okay, so anyway... Um, Let's go ahead and what we're going to do is we're going to drive down uh, to the paper mill. Um, I also, off camera, um, jumped in the gator and I just kind of toured the whole map. And I'm going to I'm gonna do that on camera too for you guys um, and show you, you know, show you the map. Uh, just we'll take a tour of it. But the main reason why I did it now uh, or, you know, off camera is because I was I wanted to figure out what property we're gonna buy next and also um, look for what what's gonna be our permanent home in this series and I found a place that's just really really neat and we will have a, an episode dedicated to that in the process of doing that I also found three more carvings but I did not pick them up because I wanted to show them uh, show that on camera with you guys so I know where three more carvings are now and yeah so we'll have an episode where we go around and uh, just just tour the map and get those three carvings that I found and that'll bring in another hundred fifty thousand dollars okay so let's see to get to the paper mill we want to go up the road this way and we're gonna turn left on the highway up here and then we go up there there a ways and then down kind of into a a, a uh, down near the river okay so we'll turn here let's turn our lights on I'm gonna get up to the top of the hill and then I'm gonna check my map well actually here I can probably do it this way yeah, if, if you look at the map I just brought up, almost directly in the center of the map, but just a little bit to the uh, southwest, there's a blue diamond thingy. That's where the paper mill is, so that's where we're headed. So we're going to go across the, the river and then around the corner and then down uh, a little dirt road to the paper mill. Now, I... Um, I've been given some thoughts to the whole, you know, chipping I situation, especially with the the deadwood logs. And I think what I'm going to do moving forward, I mean, let's just face it, guys. The deadwood logs suck no matter what you do with them. <laughs> They're just not worth it. But we have to do something with them is the thing. And um, so... What I'm, what I think we're gonna do is for for the deadwood logs, we're gonna cut them in long 12 foot meter lengths or nine, uh, well nine, we'll do nine meter lengths. Load them on this trailer, and when we have full load, we just bring them down to the paper mill. For all of the scrap wood, we're gonna probably throw those into like a tipper, 
And then what we will do there is... Is that a carving up there? By the little water tower thing? I think I just found another carving, guys. <laughs> cool. Um, okay, hold on. Do we parkour up this way? How do we get up there? Yeah, there's a carving. See it right there? Um, how do we get up there, though? Now, we do a run and jump over here. All right, it's a squirrel. You found the squirrel sculpture. Just 14 more to go. Fantastic. Um, and $50,000, too. When I was um, driving around, I also drove around town, which we will do on camera. And uh, I discovered something else about these carvings that's really cool, but I'll explain that later when we get to, uh, when we look at it. Okay, so we want to buy this. Uh, this is the paper mill. Now, the reason I'm buying the paper mill right now, $130,000, so it's not cheap, but it's ours now, is because um, this is, there's, I think there's only two productions, aside from the sawmill, of course, which we're also going to buy at some point here, um, that takes wood directly. Most of the other productions ha take things like, you know, processed wood, like boards and lumber and that kind of thing. But this one, we can just drop the wood into straight... And so I figured, you know, it's probably going to be, we're going to be further ahead to take our scrap wood in particular, but, e you know, even our dead wood. And, you know, in cases like this where we're very done with the property and I have less than a container load of wood, that sort of thing, and just drop it off at the paper mill. Um, so that way we can start making paper and, you know, uh, do the whole production thing. So that is the plan. And I'm going to do that instead of chipping. I'm not planning on, on doing chipping. Okay, so um, we just added 12,741 liters to the mill. And then if we go in here and we yeah take our paper factory. Oh, we can make carton rolls or paper rolls. Paper rolls require more wood and costs less to produce. What is, well, you know what? I mean, we might as well do both. Why not, right? Let me look at the pricing though. What's the difference between the price on those two? So cartons, we're looking at 59, if we sent it to Elk Creek, uh, Elk Creek, Elm Creek, and paper, we're looking at, ooh, papers, seems to be a little more valuable but not significantly so 553 I'm wondering though if we can sell that at Silver Run Market and that at Silver Run Market okay so right now the cartons would sell for 52 that would sell for 56 Maybe we should just focus on paper. I mean, if paper's a little bit better than carton, that seems to make a little more sense to do. So let's not do cartons. Let's deactivate that, and we'll just focus on paper. And look at that. My goodness, that filled up this thing more than I thought it was going to. We're, we filled it up about 45%, which is great. Uh, of course, we put a lot of good wood into it, but, and that's fine. I mean, this is a production, so there's no harm in putting good wood into it either. But it's probably primarily, my plan for this is primarily going to be our dumping ground, if you will, for scrap wood and for dead wood. That being said, though, it would probably behoove us to, to prime it and fill it completely up, you know, even with, um, with good wood. Now, let's look at something as far as the map goes. If we do farmland... Yeah, I don't, this isn't really the best territory, and it's kind of expensive for what it is, too, because, you know, you got all these cliffs here. There's only really one little section up here that's even loggable, and that might be pretty steep on top of a hill or something up there. So, yeah, I don't think I'm going to purchase this property. Uh, we're just going to have the, the production. 
So, I'll keep an eye on this, um, but I do want to, I think we should fill it all the way up. But the problem is, is I don't have any more wood at the moment until we buy new property. So, I'll keep an eye on it. If it looks like it's going down quickly, we might have to do a minor change in plans and, and get that going as soon as possible. All right, fantastic, man. Uh, let me look at something else here real quick while we're in the area. Uh, we're not super far from another carving that I know where it's at. Um, in fact, yeah, that would kind of help offset pain for this. I'm just trying to decide if I want to do that right now, though. Because I want to I want to have an episode where we just enjoy the map. Guys, this map, if you have not been around this map, either yourself, if you're playing it or seen someone else, it is just gorgeous. The Giants have done such a wonderful job on this map. And we, you know, we've only seen really just this little small part in the, the town so far. It's I was just really impressed with how well done this map is. Um, you know, it's on another level, I think, even from like Elm Creek and and you know Hoberlon or however you pronounce that in those other maps, Erlengrat and whatnot. Um, I'm just okay. I'm trying to think here. Let's let's grab one of these carvings now, just to help offset this cost. Um, and I think the one we're gonna get is we're gonna go back this way up by the the sawmill. All right, so now that I've decided that, now I want to look at the route. So I think we're going to go up this road here. Or no, we could just cross the ford, go up this road here. We're going to head north. And, okay. Yeah, let's do it. So this is going to be a mini tour, at least up to where we're, where we're headed. And... Let's just kind of do this as a nice little time lapse. So guys, enjoy the music. Okay, um, we're going to just leave the truck there, and the carving that I found is up on the top of this hill. And it's just sitting on top of this rock, and I think it's a cat, if I remember right. Yep, there it is. Oh, it's a fox. Okay, you found the fox sculpture. 13 more to go. Okay, nice. So that just offset the cost of the paper mill by $100,000 for us. Um, so we're now, now we're only $30,000 less than uh, when I started the episode. So that helps tremendously. Okay, but like I said, you know, we'll, we'll plan an episode. I'm going to show you the property that we're going to move to as our permanent residence. Um, it is really neat, at least I think so. 
and just kind of do a map tour and we'll we'll just jump in the gator and drive around the gator you know that gator is awesome <laughs> you can climb up hills like it's nothing um whereas trying to get around in in our big truck here uh, going up some of those hills as you may have noticed in <laughs> that time lapse is not all that great probably guys not for sure but probably the sawmill here is going to be our next purchase but i don't want to buy it right now well man should i though i've got the money i mean we're, we're going to make a lot more money off of processed lumber than we are off of just straight up logs but i guess it doesn't make sense for me to get it right this moment because i can't even bring logs to it at the moment until we so that means you know purchasing our next logging property is really needs to be our highest priority okay so yeah i just had to kind of think that through for a second um i need to get back to the highway can i do that from here yeah it looks like there's a a pathway through here oh yeah there is i see it all right guys oh i'm gonna meet you back at our property and we're gonna do a little bit more prep before we replant our trees so I'll see you back there okay guys what we're gonna do now is we're going to do a little bit more work here with the forestry mulcher um so I'm gonna I'm gonna remove all of the ground vegetation from our landing area and I know I could I could just do that with the painting tool, but I don't know. It feels more satisfying to do it, at least some of it anyways, with the forestry mulcher. Uh, the other thing we need to do is we need to make ourselves a road up to the cabin too. Um, and maybe clear a little bit more area around the cabin for machinery and that sort of thing. This cabin, by the way, is it, it's our home for now, but it's not going to be our permanent home. Um, so it'll it'll just be our cabin when we're logging on this property. So, and, uh, you know, because you've seen all of this before, I think, again, uh, let's just do another time lapse. Uh, and, yeah, so enjoy the music again. You and I, we're trouble in sight. Beating hearts don't lie An empty page, a story to write I'm in love, you're divine And it's all in our signs We're going away Get your back, check the tag Decision is made Lock your door, need no more It's already paid Cancel your mail for a
All right, guys, I think that wraps up uh, getting the landing prepared. Uh, oh, we need to do it. We needed to do a road too. Got a couple more spots here uh, to patch up with painting, and uh, then I want to do a little road up to the cabin too. And yeah, so ne so what will happen now? Well, at least what I think is going to happen. I I don't think any of this vegetation grows back naturally. Um, that'd be kind of cool if it did, but I don't think it does. So we'll still plant trees here, right? But when we re-log this property in the future, we'll clear this place first, and then it gives us this nice flat uh, and brush-free area uh, to do, you know, to do all of our work. I cleared some of this over here too, just because I was using this little uh, rock outcropping here as a kind of a, a backstop for logs, so that worked out pretty good. And then, you know, the rest of it, there's still some you know brush and stuff on the land but i don't want to clear all the brush i want it to still you know look somewhat natural is that a i think that's a deadwood tree okay well we have to do something about that at some point i'll probably just come up here and eat it with a um with a forestry mulcher and then you know once i started working over on this side that's when i had the new mulcher so i didn't tear up the ground over here and i i think it looks fine the way it is um yeah it's it's fine I did clear, you know, some of the brush. Uh, most, mostly these kind of open brownish red areas are where we went through with the mulcher and cleared a lot of the brush out. And um, once the trees get in, it's going to look really good, I think. Okay, so the last thing we want to do is before... Uh, and actually, when I'm done with this, we're going to sleep and go into tomorrow before we start planning because it's just getting too dark. Uh, but like I said, I want to build a road up to the cabin and maybe... Um, clear a little more of an area around the cabin too for parking machinery and stuff so let's get that done next we're gonna leave that dogwood tree there because why not it looks nice i like it oh you know what else i'd like to do is maybe see if we can make a bridge across the creek there can't get this one shrub out of there um can we paint it out of there yeah we probably can there we go okay so let's now um Get rid of some of this stuff too here for a second. Okay, go to decoration, others, and can we just put like a little wood bridge? Yeah, let's put it, oh, we're gonna have to do free mode. Okay, let's put that there. And then we're gonna have to raise the ground up a little bit to make this work. That should work. All right, let's try it. Good enough for forestry. Okay, now we just want to... Man, it's getting dark, isn't it? Um, uh, we just want to do like a little road down to the main road from the cabin. So I think I'm probably starting here.
Okay, and then finally, I'm just going to do a little bit more vegetation clearing right around the cabin area. Okay. Um, where are we at here? I'm going to be lazy and just clear this last little bit with paint. Okay. I think that looks good. Um, we are going to, quote unquote, go grab some of this gravel that we dumped over here and use that to gravel our driveway up to the house here. That works. I'm not going to gravel all of this. We'll just leave that the way that it is. Maybe just smooth that out a little bit there. Okay, I think our property is ready to replant. But we need to go to sleep because it is too dark to see what we're doing. So I will see you guys in the morning. Good morning, everybody. We have a beautiful September 3rd morning here in the Pacific Northwest. The sky is blue, the sun's shining, and it looks like it's going to stay shining at least for the next several hours. So, um... Now what we're going to do is plant some trees. I have not done this yet, so we'll see how it goes. Um, we have to purchase the tree planter thingy. And uh, here, let's look at that. If we go here and go to forestry equipment, what we're looking for is... Uh, no, that's not what we need. Um, this. Okay. It's going to it's $67,000, but this is something we're only going to really use every once in a while, so I don't think I'm going to purchase it. I think we're just going to lease it. And so just we got to get it up here. Um so let's go ahead and lease it. Not too terribly expensive. And we're also going to have to get some trees for it too. So uh, you can buy pallets of saplings at the shop. Okay, so let's go here and go to pallets and tree saplings. So it looks like we, no, it's these here, platinum expansion. So it looks like we just buy tree saplings and probably like, you know, when we're seeding a new field, we decide at that point what type they're going to be. Now let's talk about this for a second. I think that what I'm about to tell you is a little bit unfortunate. And maybe it's even an accident, but I don't think it is. I have come to find out that spruce trees have way less value than ponderosa pine and lodgepole pine. And if that's by design, and it probably is, it's probably just because the giants want us to, um, you know, work with the newer trees. But I mean, why? <laughs> um, Maybe that's true to life. I don't know. Maybe spruce wood is not as valuable as, as, as pine. I don't know. But, I mean, we're talking a huge difference in price, like thousands of dollars of difference in price. Um, so, and, and so because of I know that now, we're not going to buy spruce. We're going to buy, okay, so it looks like there's just pine, and then do we... We could print we could plant sequoias too. Interesting. Um oh okay, no, there there we go. Okay, so so lodgepole pine is the most valuable wood. And then ponderosa pine is a close second. So what I want to do then is I want to plant I don't want to plant just one type of tree though. Um so I think we're gonna do a combination of lodgepole and ponderosa. Okay, so let's buy a pallet of lodgepole. And hopefully we can load both of these simultaneously, because if we can't, then that means um, we're going to have to make two trips, which will 
take a lot longer. But I don't want, like I said, I don't want a forest of just one type of tree. So we'll at least do the two pine trees. I would love to have some spruce trees too, but I mean, the value is significantly less. So uh, it is what it is. It is what it is. All right. So it does not make financial sense for us to, to go with spruce based upon that, even though I think that sucks. It's They should have made them all, you know, comparable, not necessarily exactly the same price, but comparable, but they didn't. And so that's just the way it is. Um, and that also, by the way, explains why, you know, I would sell a container to the container store, uh, like a nine, a nine meter container. And one time it's like $78,000. The next time it's $71,000. And I'm going, man, why is it fluctuating so much? Well, I think that's why, because the 71,000 probably had more spruce in it than the 78,000. Um, okay. So it is, it is what it is. And that's what we have to work with. So now what we're going to do is we're going to reconfigure this guy to use the quick coupler thingy which we can do here with our toolbox, but we're either going to need to load the excavator onto the, onto a, a low boy and take it down or see if we can figure out a way to get the planter up here. Um, okay. So here, anyway, let's go ahead and re reconfigure the Volvo, uh, customize. And we want to put the fast coupler on it. Unfortunately, we don't have to, to pay for any of this stuff because I guess it all just came with the original price that we paid for. Um, okay, so customize that. And we still have the harvester head. It's just put somewhere else. <laughs> so, all right, we'll put our toolbox over here. And it's probably, you know what? I, I shouldn't drive that into town. That's just not something you would do in real life. So why don't we just go, is there any possibility that we could fit that thing in the back of the gator? Let's try it. <laughs> if it doesn't work well, you know, it was fun and we got to ride the gator. This thing is, a, I really enjoyed driving this little sucker around. It goes fast. It, hill, it doesn't even blink at hills, man. <laughs> so it's a, it's a fun little vehicle. Okay. So let's head on down to the store. And, oh, you know what, though? We, oh, shoot. I forgot. we got to get the pallets, too. Um, You know what we need is a pickup truck. We need a pickup truck, you guys. I just, I mean, we have $325,000. Do wait, do I owe the bank any money? I can't even remember. Nope, we don't. Okay. That's a good place to be, not owing the bank any money. Um, But... I'm kind of wanting to hang on it. Well, we have to buy some new property for uh, for one thing, so that's our first priority. But you know, there's new equipment that we want to get to. So let's just run down here and see if we can either get the planter or at least the pallets on the back of this thing. Oh, I don't know. That's pretty big. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty darn big um yeah i don't no way man that thing's bigger than the whole gator <laughs> okay but i'll bet you we could fit the pallets in here at least and get those taken up um and you could even probably conceivably lift, lift this in real life too so let's get this lifted up here and put in the back of there and it's probably not the best thing in the world to put this on top of there, but it'll probably be okay for this short little trip. Okay. Why isn't it let me strap? Do I have to get in here? There we go. Okay. Well, we can take the pallets back and then we're going to have to bring the low boy down. And get that because there's no possible way that this would fit in there oh actually i got another idea why don't we let, let's try this let's have you auto drive back to the logging camp why are you going that way 
I wonder if we could haul this up in the forklift. I don't see why not. Well, assuming it's not too heavy for even the forklift. Um, the question now, though, is how best to grab it. Probably if we come through this way. No, I don't think this is going to work. Not in real life, baby. <laughs> All right, let's try. Let's try it from the side here. What if we see if we can get one of the forks right underneath here? Oh, you know what? That's probably not an actual opening, even though it visibly looks like it. All right, let's try. Oops. Let's try this. Well, bottom line, guys, there's no realistic way I could get this up there on this forklift. And I'm not I'm not going to fudge it. Let's just let's just do it legit. Uh, which means we need to get a low boy down here. Um I think we could probably lift it on the trailer, but if we're going to go to all that trouble, we might as well just um we might as well just put the excavator on the low boy and bring it down and hook it up directly. Um, so, okay. I don't have a ride back to camp, so I guess that means we're going to have to call Uber. <laughs> Darn it. All right. Okay. Uber gave us a ride back to camp. Uh, where is the Mac? Mac is over here. Yeah, here, let's just make life easy on ourselves. <laughs> it wasn't really lined up, but... That was graceful. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right, now, let's see if we can figure out how to load this thing. And I really would like to... Yeah, I don't know if we're going to be able to put a mix in or not. Okay, so if we press R. Oh, I see what's going on there. Okay. Can we... All right, next, this gives me an idea then. Let's move this over this way a little further. Can we now fill from this? No, it keeps wanting to fill from that one. Oh, you know what? I'll bet you it's not going to let me put different types in all at the same time. Oh, no, it does. It does. We just have to have them further out of the way. Okay, let's move this back here. And this over here. Okay, now swing over to here. Load a few more of these. Swing over to here. Load a few more of these. <laughs> this is great. Little bit of this. Little bit of that. Little bit of this. Little bit of that. Okay, we're full. Nice. Um, now... Oh, 
Whoops. Isn't this thing supposed to be... Is it supposed to be at that angle? Seems to me like it should be flat. But I can't get it to, to go flat. Oh, there we go. Okay. It's the ex arm extender control. Gotcha. Okay. Now we figured it out. Okay, so I think, guys, what happens now is we just drive around and randomly pop trees down. I'm not going to plant trees in around the cabin, but we are, like I said, going to plant them in the landing area. And then we'll just log those first when the time comes. So I'm a, I'm expect. Do we have to be close to the ground? People are, okay. So yeah, we have to be close to the ground. Let's bring it about to here, and like all the way touch of the ground, or like there. Tree planter has no ground. Oh, it has to be all the way on the ground. Okay. Okay, I guess we planted that tree. Very cool. We're going to make a fairly dense forest, but we don't want to make it ridiculously dense, though, either. Here, raise up just a little bit. If I can get it just at the right height, I can still move. The problem is we're on a hill, though, so it's... Yeah, that's got to go down a little more. So one of the things that I'm... Oh, isn't that cute? Little baby Christmas tree. Um, if we look at the natural forest... So these... This is a... F well, yeah, this is a fairly thick section. So these trees are about... <clears throat> I'd say, what, about 10 meters apart, maybe? Maybe 8 eight meters apart. I mean, we don't want to put them so close to each other that A, they cause performance problems with the game, and B, they get massively tangled up with each other, you know, when we're trying to cut them. So I want to try and stick to somewhere between, let's say, five to ten meters of spacing. Okay, this is a good height because I can still move and still plant. Oh, we got a little too high off the ground there. I thought I um, read somewhere that 
the original uh, tree planter is actually faster and, and also works with these new trees. That is going to be here. So this guy. One piece. The, the downside to this, though, if I remember right, is it, I don't know what it means by one piece. It, it only plants one piece at a time, but it'll do more than one. I think it can only do like 20 trees at a time or something. Um, is there a new, another, I'll bet you there's something on Mod Hub that would work. Hmm. Well, it might be worth trying maybe the next time, but, you know, we've already put the money out for this one. Um, so we'll just use this one for now. It's going to be pretty much impossible to know where I've planted once we get into the Thule's. So <laughs> it's going to come out the way it comes out, which I guess in a sense is not bad because, you know, nature's so random that this will be random too. Here I can see the saplings, so I have a little better feel for the spacing on them. Well, my friends, this is going to take a while. And so I think I'm going to let you all go here. And I'm going to get my property replanted. And I will see you guys in the next episode in about 500 years from now. <laughs> It's going to take a long time. And the plan for the next episode is going to be for us to, well, the first and most important thing we have to do is figure out what our, the next property we're going to buy so we can get back to logging. And I, I think I know where that is, but um, we will cover that in the next episode. So, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And... We will catch you in, there we go, the next episode. Bye-bye.